Hey everyone, Brandon here, and this is building a 3D printing business in public. And in today's video, we're gonna cover should you sell physical products or STL files? Now, if you've seen any of my videos in the past, you may have seen the style or the edit team that we've done for my videos. But in these videos, and more specifically the next few videos over the course of however long this channel has exist, I might change it at some point, I might not. What I want to do is kind of talk about some topics around making money with this hobby, but as well as document the process of actually building a 3D printing business, showing you the results that I'm getting, and hopefully inspiring you to take action so you can build your own business. Now, for context, um, I built or started a company called Mountable, and Mountable is a business that allows you to mount everyday products and accessories. Basically, think of like a Stream Deck. If you don't know what a Stream Deck is, you're probably not the target market, but basically you can mount a Stream Deck to anything that's magnetic, and it's a product that people would use because people use Stream Decks and people buy these things and they need them for their setups. But my main point with this video is to show you kind of like what I'm doing in my business, the revenue numbers that we're pulling in, and then share with you some insight to help you grow your 3D printing business. Now, for context, over the last 24 hours, as I started marketing this new business, we actually generated close to over $1,000 in sales within 24 hours. Now, this isn't a lot of money, but it's also not a small amount of money. And just to show you the worksheet that we have here, because I actually go more in detail in 3D printing school, so you can join that if you want to learn more about that. But on September 1st, when we actually started marketing this heavily, we sold 51 units, bringing in a total daily revenue of $1,019.49. My products is 55 to 60% margin, and the product cost is $19.99. I want to mention, this is not going to show the profit margins and all the expenses cut down. There's no reason to show the books publicly. My goal with this is to show you the revenue. Obviously, the profit is there. But my point with this is to document this, show you what I'm doing, and give you some insight as to how I made this happen. September 2nd so far, just to show you the page, here we are. I'm going to refresh my page here so that way there's no BS. You can see total as of today, September 2nd, total sales, 56 sessions, total sales, and 50 orders. Not bad, right? So do you guys see the proof that's there, the money that's bringing in, and that way hopefully inspires you to also, you know, start selling your own product, which is something I ultimately want from everyone in the space, especially people who want to make money with this. Now, with that said, what should you do if you want to make money with 3D printing? You see the numbers here. You may have seen my previous videos. You may have seen what I've done around selling physical products and designs. Maybe you know me from selling STL files, or maybe you know me from selling physical products. Maybe in the past, prior to actually getting really big online in terms of like creating content, you may know more about that. But I can tell you that someone who has sold STL files and physical products, this is probably the biggest question I get from people, more specifically from people that I work with. And the big question is, should I sell physical products or STL files? Now, I want to offer a shift in perspective that can hopefully hope for you pick one that best fits you based off of what you're trying to accomplish. Now, with that said, I want to first cover the differences between the two and what you need to effectively actually launch the business and actually start making money in sales. So there's two things with this. So we have a physical product, right? And then STL files. And I would also include like memberships, right? Like meaning like someone pays you $10 a month for a subscription, right? Now, what are the differences? The difference is that with physical product, you are printing and shipping. Right, you're gonna print something and you're gonna ship it out and you only get paid assuming the customer receives something in the mail. If they don't get anything, they're gonna charge back, call their bank, tell you you suck, etc. With STL files, instant download. There's no shipping involved, there's no you know post processing work or anything like that. It's something they download and they get access to right away. That's supposed to be a folder, but obviously not too great. The next thing with physical is that you're selling a problem or, an, or excuse me, a solution. Or ideally you should be selling a solution and solution is, you know, dependent on what you're doing. So for example, maybe an outcome, maybe it solves a problem, right? Whatever it is, if you're able to create a physical product that does this, 
you will succeed far more compared to something that doesn't really add any real world value. So for example, one way I like to think about it is like, have you ever gone to like a self checkout and you see all these just random miscellaneous things just trying to be sold at you last minute before you check out, right? Something like a squish ball or some, some random thing. Like these things don't inherently really have any long-term value, let's be honest, right? Like you, you buy it, you might play with it for maybe an hour or two, but then after a while, it's just something that you get thrown away. That's what I'm talking about. But if you buy a product that actually solves a real world problem, for example, one thing we're doing is we're making a mountable stream deck, meaning that you can mount your stream deck on anything that's magnetic using this back plate here that we designed and created. Right. That's something that our market wants that people would use because they use stream decks and they want to mount it somewhere without it falling off or having to use screws and stuff like that. That's a solution. But with STL files, it's very different with STL files. You're just selling kind of like value and value is subjective. So, for example, if you are an artist or creator and you like to design, let's say, dragons, which is nothing wrong with that, by the way, if you like to design dragons, well, that's going to be marketed towards the 3D printing community. But the 3D printing community is actually not that big if you really think about it. And then since it's also not that big, there's also a fractionable amount of people who are in that community that actually would want to print dragons. See my point? So my point with this is like what you design will only be valuable to certain people but will not be valuable to everyone per se. So that's the main difference between a physical product and then an STL file, but they both are kind of like the same thing in a sense. Like you're still selling something that might, in, in some theories or some sense might offer a solution, but the point is like there's value that is different to everyone else, but then there's a solution which is pretty much universal for most people, right? With physical, it is upfront, more cash, but more work. Where STL files is more passive income, where you do upfront work, but maybe pay. I probably should have said, uh, obviously you still do upfront work, but you do, you get paid first. So for example, paid first, then you do the work, right? Whereas with STL files, you have to design the model first and then maybe people will buy it and download it and find some value from it, right? So it's kind of like the opposite. With physical products, you have to get paid first for you to do anything. But then with STL files, you have to do the work, which is designing the model first and then getting paid for it. And maybe it may not work out. And there's kind of like a difference between the two in terms of the workload. Now, there are so many different things that Honestly, you can differentiate between the two, but I can tell you between these two, the common denominator with these two business models, whether you're selling STLs or physical, whether you don't know what to sell, whether you want to do both, the common denominator is like, look, one of the biggest questions that people ask me is like, should I do both? Should I sell physical products and, or should I sell STL files? Now I want to offer a shift in perspective here because a lot of people, they would say they want to do both but then they end up overwhelming themselves from taking action. So what do I mean by this? So for example, somebody had asked me the other day that they wanted to do both and they were conflicted because they wanted to do that, but they felt afraid that it would overlap their business. Meaning like if they're selling physical products, they felt that would jeopardize the sales from the STL files. But I want to show you something I think would help you understand how that really doesn't really matter. I want you to think of this giant circle like the entire world. It's the earth. Now I want you to think of 3D printing as a small dot. If you were to sell STL files the, and physical products, the people that are looking for STL files, is actually a small fractional, like it is that small dot. Whereas the people who would buy the physical version is another small dot on the screen. So they're like people, these two people don't even know they exist. So regardless of whether you sell physical products or STL files, they really won't overlap or intersect each other. But at the same time, you need to know how to differentiate the two by listing them on either on different platforms, creating different accounts and not marketing to the wrong audience. So for example, I would not sell a physical 3D print to people in the 3D printing community because people in the 3D printing community, they don't want that. They want STL files. But at the same time, I would not sell an STL file to a random person on the street 
because they wouldn't know what to do with it and they probably wouldn't want to invest money into a 3d printer get my point so the question here is like should i do one or the other and will it affect the other one to be honest no because they have no correlation to each other and truthfully people don't really care what you do and how you make your money they just want the product and the person who's best fit for the product will come to you whichever product they want and buy it that's as simple as that with that said now we got that out the way what's the three things you need to actually start a business so here's what i did with mountable because truthfully i think people over they overanalyze what they need to do and just spend more time thinking about doing it than rather than doing it and this is what i do with mountable and i'm gonna be completely honest I just found a place to sell it. This for me is TikTok and Shopify. That's where I'm selling. That's it. Nothing too crazy. I'm not setting up Amazon FBA. I'm not setting up Etsy. I'm not thinking about any of that. These are the two platforms where I'm selling products. Either someone purchases it on TikTok shop or someone purchases it on Shopify. I don't care where they buy it, but as long as they buy it, I'll print it, sell it, and make sure they get a valuable product. The second thing, is a product and i only have one product by the way one product two colors that's it i don't have five ten fifteen different colors i don't have small medium large extra large i don't have you know customization options no i'm keeping the product lineup as simple as i can and i only have one product that i'm selling right now by the way and all the sales that you've seen from that storefront was actually from one product now why do i tell you this it's because too many times i see people who tell me they they think they need a big audience to make money with this they think they need to have five ten different products on their store before they can actually start promoting it they think they need to do all these different things other than just pushing their product and selling it to people and and I can tell you, I've seen it time and time again. I've seen people who they they spend more time thinking and trying to perfect something rather than just trying to do it. I can tell you with this physical product business that I just started, I only had two machines and I actually had to go buy another machine and I have to buy even another machine because I don't have the capacity to fulfill that. So I need to buy more machines to compensate for that, which is a good problem because now I'm overwhelmed with work, which is going to keep me busy. But now I'm making mistakes and failing forward and understanding what I need in order to build the business that I want. Instead of thinking about what I need, doing that and buying all these extra machines without having the demand in the first place. And that is key. That is crucial. And when you have a product, when you have a good product, you know how to sell it and you know how to market it, which is our third thing, you'll have no problem selling it. Now, what is my marketing plan in my business and how would this relate to you? So my marketing plan looks like this. First thing I do is to create three to five videos per day. Second, I talk about my product in my videos. And then um, I create a CTA at the end of the videos. That's it. And I post these videos on TikTok and that's all I do. Three to five videos per day. That's actually, for some people, a lot. But to be honest, for me, that's not really a lot. Like you can do this within five minutes. So that's all I'm doing per day. Now, if you imagine if I'm posting three to five videos per day, right? And I just want you to imagine right? One, two, three, four, five. I do this once a day. Imagine what that looks like over 30 days. 30 days times five equals 150. I don't know what that was. iPad's being weird. A hundred and fifty videos. What is going on? All right, I'm going to delete that because this iPad 150 a day, right? And or excuse me, a month, not a day. Now, I want to be honest, there are people that do do like 100 videos per day, by the way. 
this much volume of content and videos and marketing over an expanded, expanded, extended period of time will eventually get you sales. Like I promise you, if you just stick to this, even if you have one product on your store, for example, on the business that I'm selling on right now, we have less than a hundred followers, by the way, and we already made two grand. We don't have like thousands of followers. We only have one product on our store, two colors on the store, and we don't, we don't even have more than a thousand followers on our business page. So you can see my, my, it's insane to think that you need all these prerequisites before you can start making money. And truthfully, you don't need any of that. You don't need a business license. You don't need to have a fancy logo or website set up. You don't need to have any of that. People just want the outcome. People just want the product. So you can see when I'm putting out so much volume, so many videos over time, even if a video gets, let's just say, it's, let's just say this video gets five views five views and then this one gets 25 and this one gets 100 and this one gets 30 and then this one gets 75 that is like if you add all of these up that's like what like 250 views 250 views that's 250 different people who saw your videos and your content and now imagine you're doing that times 30 whatever that number is right uh, I don't know what that number is, right? You can, you can do the math, whatever that looks like 250 times 30 over 30 or over 30 days over a month, that's going to be thousands of views. And my point with this video is like, look, whether you should sell STL files or physical products, it doesn't really matter. Pick a vertical, stick to that vertical and actually do the work by the way, then understand that you're actually a small fish in this giant pond of being a seller, by the way, that people are not paying attention to you, that people don't care what you sell. People don't care that you selling an STL file and people don't care that you're selling a physical product. People don't care whether or not you think they're going to overlap each other. In addition to that, once you understand that people don't care, now you're much more willing to make mistakes. And those mistakes will help you understand that it's not about being perfect, but just by about having these three core elements, a place to sell, a product, one or two products, keep it simple, as simple as you can, and then just having a plan to get people to buy your product. And that's really what it is. That's really what I'm doing every single day that has grown mountable as quickly as I did. And I've shown you guys the numbers. I've shown you what I've done. Now, obviously showing you the videos is a different story because honestly, the videos doesn't really matter. But my main point is like, all I'm doing is just talking about the product and then telling people where they can buy it if they want to get this product. It's as simple as that. So Hopefully this video has been insightful and informative. Hopefully it's provided some value. My main point with this video is to help you take action and stop procrastinating on the things such as thinking or planning or contemplating, but actually just take the action. And truthfully, it can happen way faster than you think. This happened within three days. And if I can do it, you can do it too. So with that said, if you guys have found this video insightful and informative, make sure to check out 3D Printing School. 3D Printing School will give you everything you need to start learning how to design your own models from scratch. Look, if you wanna create physical products and you wanna sell STL files, do a combination of both or even build a business like this, you will have to inevitably learn how to create your own products and designs. This is a skill set that will help you differentiate yourself compared to everyone else in the market. And truthfully, as a seller who has done both as a physical product seller and a digital product seller, I can tell you the biggest skill set I have compared to everyone else in my market is being able to pump out products, create quality products, and being able to rapidly prototype everything within the exact same day simply by having this skill set. And if you're someone that is serious about building a business with 3D printing, learning how to design is going to be a critical skill that's going to help you differentiate yourself from everyone else, but also help you build products that allow you to build a brand and a business you truly care about. So with that said, if you're curious about it, check out 3D Printing School down below. There's a seven-day free trial. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.